Hiya. If you don't know me already, uh, I play bass in a band called Above Below. Uh, and in this video, I'm putting together a new, bigger uh, pedal board. Um, because every time I put together a pedal board, I get really lazy and I make a huge mess of it, as I'm sure a lot of you will have at times. So I thought, hey, we're in a pandemic lockdown at the moment, and uh, this is probably a decent way to keep myself from letting it become too shitty. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Alright, so here we have it. This is the uh, finished product. I say that kind of hesitantly because I have had to take a few shortcuts that I did not want to. Um, but I'll take you through how it works. So, on the back here we have the Warwick, the Rockboard Mod 2. They make a bunch of different ones. Um, I kind of just went with this one because A, it's what I had available at the time, and B, the USB through is kind of cool. There's a, uh, a USB outlet on the other side of that Chiox um, DC7. So I'll be able to connect that up through once I get a cable that'll do it. All right, so on the patch bay here, this plug goes straight to the tuner and that's like the start of the chain. This one here is the outlet from the wireless. So I just patch that over if I want to use wireless instead of um, directly going in cable. This is the outlet from the two notes pedal, which I'll get to in a sec, but so that's the main output. I haven't really decided if I need to use uh, the other one yet. All right, so at the start of the chain, I've got a Peterson tuner. These guys are the best in the business and they always have been. Uh, they just didn't really have an affordable pedal board friendly version up until pretty recently. So I got this and that is so far the best one I've tried for super low tuning like we have. I'm using the Shure GLXD16 wireless system, which is a really cool format. It fits on the pedal board, which means you don't have to, you know, carry around a um, rack mount receiver or anything like that. It does have a built-in tuner, which I wish was as good as the Peterson, so I didn't need that, but it just doesn't work uh, that well for low tunings. This little Boss um, pedal here is probably the main component of this new board. It basically allows you to run two completely separate effects loops and you've got volume controls for each of them. So this is essentially my clean and dirty foot switch. Um, so up the top here you've got the clean or cleanish uh, channel which is the dark glass hyperluminal going into the B7K uh, and then that comes back to here. Uh, on the dirty channel you've got the Microtubes X Ultra. I think the X series is the best thing they've done so far and I just I used to just run that by itself, but I found trying to switch it on and off and 
uh, get two different tones out of it was kind of hard with level matching and everything. So I just wanted to be able to run this full bore. You can see I just low comp the crap out of it. Um, and then yeah, I'll come up with a different uh, cleaner setting for this. I haven't really gotten a chance to use this in context with the band yet, so I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but anyway, it sounds good in my room. Uh, so then the output of this line selector goes straight to the sentry, which I usually just barely use just in case there's any kind of noise, but I really don't have much of an issue with it. And then we have this guy here, uh, which is a two notes uh, Torpedo Cab M, it's just a speaker cab simulator, which is really good for uh, running to front of house or running to your in-ear rig. It's got an iPhone app, which is really cool. You can browse cabinets and do it all there. So it's really easy to use instead of fiddling with these knobs. Uh, I've got a rig here, number 69, which is really funny, obviously. Uh, and yeah, it's good for recording. It's good for a bunch of shit. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a baseboard, you know, you don't really need to think about it that hard, uh, but it is a pretty significant step up from uh, what I was using. Um, I've got a big gap here. I'm not really sure what I'm doing with that yet. I knew I needed a little bit of extra space just in case, you know, if we decide to tune differently and I want to use like a Digitech drop pedal or something like that. Uh, that's a potential use. I've looked at a couple of Source Audio synth pedals, that sort of thing. If you have a suggestion, something I should try, please let me know. Um, that would be cool. And yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll have more of me using this uh, in probably other videos. So please do the whole like and subscribe thing. That would be much appreciated. Thanks. Um, before I end this video, I just want to say that it is sort of, but not really sponsored by Guitar Factory in Parramatta, where I work. Um, so if you want to talk shit about gear or buy some, preferably um, pretty much any day of the week, that's where you will find me. And they obviously uh, do me a lot of favors with uh, the gear that I use and that sort of thing. So please, if you're an Australian watching this, guitarfactory.com.au. Thank you.